Hello, welcome to Development is Life, the show where explaining development concepts and analogies is as fun as playing your favorite game with your favorite people while listening to your favorite music. Now, we've got a great set of concepts to explain today, but first let me introduce our guest explainers. Our first guest is like the ultimate hummus dish for developers. Smooth, well-balanced, and packed with all the right ingredients to get you excited about coding. So welcome, Ben Greenberg. Hey, I'm Ben. I'm a developer advocate and software engineer who loves making complex ideas simple and fun for developers. Whether it's generative AI, databases, or just talking about code, I live for turning tricky concepts into something you can actually use. You can find me online at hummusonrails.com. Our second guest is like sitting by the fire with your favorite novel, sipping a mug of hot cocoa. Please welcome Lily Barrett. Hi, I'm Lily. I'm a software engineer, writer, and technical community builder. And in my spare time, I run a pop-up romance bookshop and tell knock-knock jokes. Now, let's talk about our first topic of the day. Let's talk about asynchronous programming. Ben, why don't you take the first analogy? Async programming is like making breakfast for your family. Imagine you're cooking pancakes, brewing a pot of coffee, and preparing the shakshuka all at the same time. If you wait for the pancakes to cook completely before starting the shakshuka, everyone in your family is going to be yelling at you and saying they are starving. Instead, you start the pancakes, tell your smart device to start a timer, and while they're cooking, you get the coffee brewing. While the coffee is brewing, you start cracking the eggs and preparing the sauce for the shakshuka. Async programming does the same thing. It lets tasks overlap so you're not stuck waiting for one thing to finish for the next. Otherwise, just like your family shouting you for breakfast, your users will be shouting at you why they have to wait so long to finish what they came to do on your app. All right, now that we've had a full breakfast, Lily, how about you take a crack at async for us in your own way? What is asynchronous programming? Let's start with a hallmark analogy. Picture a tiny, adorable, small town. We have Mark and Effie. Mark runs a big box bookstore, kind of like Barnes and Noble or Amazon back in the day. Effie runs a small romance bookshop. They are very at odds. They dislike each other immensely. Now, for whatever reason, they start writing secret messages to each other without knowing who the other person is. And in these epistolary confessions, they reveal their darkest fears. They talk about their biggest dreams and they slowly fall in love via the written word without knowing who the other person is. Now, out of nowhere, there is a Valentine's Day snowstorm and they wind up stranded in a little cabin in the middle of nowhere. So over the course of the evening, they gradually come to realize that the other person was the one they'd been writing these messages to the whole time. The person they had fallen in love with while going about their lives, asynchronously exchanging letters, receiving messages, and all the while hating each other's guts. But of course, it's Hallmark. So everything gets neatly resolved with a happy ending, just like a JavaScript promise when things go well. We don't even have to see Mark putting Epi out of business at the end. Lily, that analogy might be a little too wholesome. How about a little body horror? Tell us about array.map in JavaScript. How do you use JavaScript's array.map function? Have you ever dreamed of a better version of yourself? Younger, more beautiful, more perfect. We have here three aged movie stars desperate to reclaim their youth. We have one, just one, injection of the substance. And that results in new and improved versions of each aged movie star out in the world, enjoying all the pleasures of youth one week at a time, while the original remains untouched. Okay, I'm officially creeped out a little now thinking about 
all the arrays that I've mapped over my career and thinking of that poor original data sitting all alone in a cold, dark room, never experiencing the amazing new life it was promised. Ben, how about you help me out with some wholesome food-related analogies to explain the domain name system, or DNS as we like to call it. DNS is like a travel agent for the web. Imagine you want to visit the world's best falafel shop, but you only know its name, not the exact address. Instead of wandering aimlessly, you call up your trusty travel agent, and they give you the address right away. DNS does the same thing for websites. It translates the name you know, like ofairfalafel.com, into the exact address where the website lives, which is its IP. Without DNS, you'd have to memorize long, complicated numbers just to visit a site, like remembering GPS coordinates of every falafel shop instead of just their names. DNS makes the web possible to navigate, so you can focus on enjoying the experience and your falafel. Okay, thanks for bringing us back into wholesome territory, Ben. Well, that's it for this episode. I want to thank Ben and Lily for being our first guests today. Uh, I hope you learned a thing or two. And until next time, I'm Brian Robinson reminding you that development is like a really cool superpower that helps us turn our amazing ideas into realities. Put that superpower to use for yourself and for those around you. Take care. <laughs>